Hello everyone, this is uh, Adam, Chief Operations Officer of the Historical African Martial Arts Association, and we are now on week two of uh, the Learn Historical African Martial Arts online workshop. Um, so I'm going to wait until a few people show up, everybody's uh, sort of logged in, they're in. I'm going to share this a couple of places and then we'll uh, get started with today's class. Just getting all the shares in right now, making sure that uh, everyone who wants to take part in the class can take part and watch. So this should take a minute. Let's see, what else we got? All right. All right, so there we've shared it. How you doing, Jeff? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, who else we got? We got Vance. Vance is here. Good. Vance, I remember you from last week. And I think we're Facebook friends now. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have? We got five people in. Uh, we'll wait a minute until we get to about 10. And then we will uh, get started with, uh, with today's class. So uh, just like last week's class, this one will be made available on Facebook later. Um, the plan is at some point later to put these on YouTube. We'll probably cut some of the superfluous points off at the beginning and the end, maybe just focus on the highlights, but can uh, deal with that later. Hello there, Lydia. Hello, Andra. Nice to see you. Good, good. So if uh, everybody remembers, uh, last week we talked about the basics. So we went through the 13 stages. We talked a bit about the history of modern Tartib. We also went into a little bit of the etiquette. So I have a surprise for you guys for today. Today, I am going to make you dance. So uh, for those of you unfamiliar with instruments from the Middle East or in North Africa, uh, this is what's called a dubek, also known as a darbuka. Um, basically the difference is really in how big they are. This one's kind of somewhere in the middle. It's quite light actually. Uh, this particular one I have uh, was made in Turkey. And as you can tell from a few of the dents, it has had a fair bit of abuse. <laughs> but um, definitely this is important. Now, uh, the band uh, for uh, modern tahtib uh, consists of four parts. Uh, you have the dumbek, which is the most essential. If you have no other instrument, this is the one you should have. Uh, you can also use the daf, also known as the tar. Um, then there is the mizmar, and then there is a large bass drum whose name uh, escapes me at this point, but it's pay played with a hand and a very thin stick. Uh, so those four pieces of the band the, uh, will all come together and actually play the music that goes with it. So today, I'm going to teach you a few dances. Uh, we'll also go through an exercise called the uh, Musalafa 3 if we have time. And then, of course, we'll have open floor. And then next week, we'll move from modern Tatib to El Matrek, which is an Algerian form of stick fighting and comes in one of three forms. Uh, you have uh, Zuj, uh, Matrek, and then you have Wakaf. Um, so we will be doing specifically single stick Matrek. And then after that, we'll be doing North African Sabre and Shield, just the basics. Somebody said the Davul, thank you. That was, ex that was um, escaping my mind. So thank you very much for mentioning that. So um, we're going to wait another minute or two. We'll let the numbers get up to about uh, eight, ten people. Ten people. When we get to ten, or I guess we'll on for another minute or so. Uh, then we'll uh, we'll begin the class. Um, and as always, we will start with a warm-up. We will move on to stick mastery. And then once the warm-up and stick mastery are completed, then we will move on to the uh, particular exercises. Uh, so while I'm here, uh, do we have any questions from last week? I'll be uh, waiting for everybody's comments. We'll give it a minute.
And also as a reminder, um, if you do not have staff, uh, you can, for the purposes of this class, use a uh, broom handle or a dowel. Um, just making sure that the ends are rounded. This is important because you don't want to uh, hurt yourself and you don't want to hurt your colleague if you are practicing with anyone. All right, let's see. So, uh, yes, the instrument that uh, I'm talking about, Renard, is called a dumbek. This is an instrument that uh, is from the Middle East but is very popular in North Africa, the Middle East, and um, other parts of Western Asia. Um, it's a great drum used in belly dancing, used for martial arts, family gatherings, music. If you listen to Arabic music, it features very heavily. Um, so that is the, uh, that is the instrument. So, uh, we waited long enough, let's get started. All right, so if everybody has their sticks, we will uh, begin with a warm up. Let me just get far enough back so that you don't see me. Get this chair out of the way. All right, perfect. So, uh, loosen up your shoulders. Shake it out. Shoulders are probably a little bit sore after that, but feel a little funny. Give that a second. Good. Take the stick. Rest it on the small of your back. Get it under your elbows. Put your hands on your hips just near the back. Now, roll your hips. Just like that. You're trying to loosen up your hip joints. Just like that. Doesn't have to look cute, just has to get you loose. Good. And back the other way for three more. One, two, three. Good. Check that out. Good, 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 good. All right. Now, to your knees. So you want to put your hands on your knees. We're going to do a different, different set of warm up today. And you're going to turn your knees. And apply this way. Three, four, five, back the other way. Three, four, five. Good. All right, take your stick. 
Plant it on your right side. Right foot, toe to the ground. Roll the ankle. And just remember, we always roll the ankles in the beginning so we do not roll our ankles later because that's painful. It hurts. And now we'll move on to the other leg. Take your stick on the left side, plant it, toe up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, shake that out. Okay, you should be feeling a bit looser now. Take your stick, plant it on your right side. Now we're going to do the kick, if you guys remember from last week. You're going to take your right foot, kick it up, and then take your left foot, and kick it back. We're going to do that for 10 on this side, and then 10 on this side, and then we're going to do a couple more stretches, okay? Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switching sides. Take the stick, plant it on your left side. Now the left leg is going forward and the right leg is going back. We're going to do this for ten. Ready, and one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good, good. For that stretch. All right. Take the stick in your hands like this, shoulder width apart. Take your left leg, put it forward. Take your right leg, foot at a straight angle. Put it back, just like that. So you wanna look like this. And push your hips forward and lean into it. Don't let your front knee pass your toe. You just wanna feel the stretch in here and make sure your rear heel does not leave the ground. And we push. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up. Same thing with the right foot. Forward, left back. Feet on the ground. Going forward, making sure the knee does not pass the toe. Push your hips forward. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and up again. Shake it out. All right, now we're gonna stretch the back a little bit. Take the stick, shoulder width apart, chest, above your head, chest, waist, knees, ground, knees, waist, chest, up, chest, waist, knees. Ground, knees, waist, chest, up, waist, knees, front, chest, chest, knees, waist, knees, waist, chest, waist, knees, up. Good. All right, now. We're gonna do a little bit of dancing today, so I wanna work on a bit more stretching. So if you will take your leg, your feet, and put them slightly more than the shoulder width apart. Take your stick, just like this, shoulder width apart. Now reach down, touch the ground. Now take the right point of your stick, and put it in front of your left toe, and turn. You should feel the stretch in here, in the inner part of your leg, in the inner part of your leg. Extend yourself. Nine, ten, and good. All right. Shake that out. 
All right. Hope everybody's feeling limber. Because now we're on stick mastery. So if anybody remembers, we have a couple of exercises. We have the, the mid toss and the high toss. Now for people who are not outside and can't do this, uh, we're going to do what's called a low. So we'll start with the, we'll start with so take the stick, hold it about the forearm out, throw it over your shoulder, catch it in your hand, flip it, catch. So the motion goes like this. All you're doing is putting it right here. You're just catching it. Nothing else. Okay? We're going to do 10. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do 10 more. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. It's not. All right. Now we're gonna do a bit of a turn. So if you remember from last week, stick. Turn it. Exchange. Turn again. Turn it. Exchange. Turn again. Just like that. All you're doing is passing it to your own, passing it to your hand. You're going to do 10 of these. You're going to start counting now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Good job. All right. Now, next we're going to do the mid toss. Now, if you remember the mid toss from last week, it goes like this. You take the stick, holding it in the proper position. Put the center in the bottom of your right hand. Make sure that your up hand, your, your uh, upper hand, I should say, is one and a half hands above. Okay, now, bend your knees, toss, and catch. So it should look like this. Bend your knees, toss, and catch. I'll show it to the other side. Bend your knees, toss, and catch. We're going to do 10 of those, okay? And if you're feeling a little bit, ad a little bit adventurous, you can uh, do it with a leg raise, okay? But uh, if you're just joining and just starting now, just to be stationary and uh, do the toss. So as a reminder, the stick should travel this way, okay? Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, 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 good. All right, now we're going to do the high toss. For those of you who are in, a, in an apartment or a house, can't get outside to, uh, to do that, I'm gonna ask you to do the, uh, the low toss. So you touch the tip to the ground with one hand, throw it up, catch it with the other. One, two, three, so do 10 of these, okay? The purpose of these exercises is to get you comfortable with the stick its dimensions and feeling how quickly or how slowly it will move from hand to hand. Uh, I've seen stick mastery work out in actual jousts where one of the users might accidentally drop the stick but it will bounce. So the stick will drop, it'll bounce, he'll catch it and I believe in that match he scored the winning point. Uh, just fancy twirly moulinettes with the stick. Now for the high toss. Sun's a little bit in my eye, so I'm going to turn a little bit here so that I don't miss and drop it on my head because, I mean, it would make a funny video, but I'm not, I'm not in the mood to uh, have the knots on the top of my head today. So, take the stick, hold it up about shoulder height. Now you want to bend your knees, keep your eye on the stick, toss it up, and catch it. Now you want to repeat that ten times. 
So we're going to do it together. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And now we're going to do the other side. Just going to turn a little bit. When you are ready, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and last one, ten. Good, good. All right, I'm going to wait a second for everybody to get, to get caught up. Um, I know it's not super easy, so I'm going to count a little bit or wait a little bit, and then uh, the next person, and then the next, we'll get to, get to the next exercise. So, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to do some dances. Now, the dances are important because in martial arts such as these, and you see this across the continent of Africa, uh, dance is used as a tool for teaching specific martial techniques. So uh, whether it is Ram, you know, whether it is uh, Buni, whether it is any other ritualized style, the combat motions are actually worked into the dance. So if you remember from last week, we had moves like the Sadda. So I'll show you how the Sadda works into the dance called Aganal or the camel, and, um, and how that particular motion can be applied. Uh, then we'll also look at doing a motion called the small horse. So I believe we did that last week, and uh, we're going to do that again today. And uh, then what I'm going to do is uh, make you dance. So I will play uh, some rhythms for you and talk a bit about the music, and uh, we'll do a little bit of that. And then uh, if there's time, I will teach you a motion called the Musalafa 2. I was going to do the 3, but it's a bit complicated, so we'll go with 2. Okay, so here we go. I'm backing up so you can see my feet. So. The dance that is called the small horse, if you remember from last week. So you have a stick. Now, in the dance, you put it on your shoulder. Now, it is different from the uh, martial technique, because the martial technique is using the same footwork from the dance to step out of the center line. But in this case, it's a dance that's done in the circle. So uh, the motion, you have your feet here, just like that. So your toe should be down the side of your foot, right past your ankle. And then that's the motion there. So this is the small horse, just like that. Now, when you are applying this motion, when you are applying this motion to uh, the martial aspect of body and feet, this is what you end up with. Imagine this is the center line, and the opponent's weapon is coming towards me. So what will happen is I will take the foot that is on the side that I want to go to, I will step over to the side, and I will execute the small horse, and that will take me out of the center line. If I want to do it on the other side, same thing. I'll take my foot on the same side I want to go to, I'll turn it about 45 degrees, and then I bring my other foot in, just like that, and that takes me right out of the center line. And that of course frees you up to uh, counter. So in the actual defense, you would mix that with the pyramid guard. So what you'll do is take a small horse, just like you did last week, flip over to the side and turn up, you want to cover up. Now we call this the pyramid, this particular motion the pyramid, where your hand, one hand is up, one hand is down, and it's pointed downwards. Mostly because it reminds you of the side of the pyramid and it reminds you of the angle that you need to take the stick at. So, the small horse dance, this is the small horse dance, just straight forward. The small horse, and you actually apply it in the martial context. So, that is a small horse. So, uh, we're going to go through and do that uh, a little bit. I'm going to uh, go through it with you once, then I'm going to show you Al Gaman, and 
then I'm going to make you dance if you want to, of course. So, ready? You start with the right foot. So the right foot goes forward, left foot. Left foot forward, right foot. Left, right. 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 More left, right. Left, right. Good, good, good. Now the next motion is called the camel. And this motion moves in this way. So you have the stick about shoulder width apart. Your right hand has the stick in the center, just like we talked about last week. This is the beginning position here. Now, the stick motion is like this. So it's kind of like you're pumping. Just like that. Now, this is put together with footwork. Leg up. Leg up. Leg up. Leg up. Leg up. Leg up. Just like that. So, in the dance, you can add a stick. It's like that. Nice smooth motion. So this is called the camel. Now, how do you apply this? Well, if you are a jumping bean like I am, um, the way that this would apply is, if, well, if you're not jumping, step, strike. And that's the motion right there. So step, strike. Or if you're coming down the other side, step, strike. Go up again. Step, strike. So that is how that can apply. You can also use it to get uh, out of range. So if somebody is striking and you just need to get off range, step, and then the movement. So the dance again, just like that. So you guys are gonna do this with me. And one. It's a bit more aerobic. So just do this with me here. Good, 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 good. A couple more. Good. Well done. Well done, everybody. So now it's your turn. This is where the Doombeck comes into play. So take your stick, put it over your knee, or pick, put your stick down. Well, I'm putting my stick down. This is going over the knee. So the Doombeck has three sounds. Boom, ta. So the rhythm that is normally used in uh, modern Tahtid is the Saidi rhythm. And it basically goes like this. Now, there are different signals that you'll hear in a modern Tahtid match. You'll start with the roll. That is supposed to indicate to people to get ready to move, to get ready to dance, or to get ready to fight. Um, then you have, that is an indicator of some of the, uh, of how to step out of the ring or to step into the ring, uh, depending on where you are. So you have, get ready, you have stepping into your, stepping into your place, and then you have the signal to play. are going to do um, as I do this I'm going to call out the motion and then you are going to uh, do the dance normally when I have a physical class here we're in a circle and I'll tell everybody to go backwards or go forwards I'll tell them to go faster or slower so today you're just going faster and you're just going slower because I'm sure not everybody has a big circle that they can run around in and uh, and, and do this so let's get started we're gonna start with the small horse so 
make sure to take the stick and put it on your shoulder. So for the small horse dance, the stick is on your shoulder. All right? And for Al Gamal, for the camel, it is shoulder width apart. Draw motion, okay? So here we go. Well done, everybody, to uh, participated. I uh, hope I didn't make you sweat too much, because now we are on to, let's see. Now we're going to learn a new exercise, and this exercise is called the Masalafa 2. You can do this by yourself, or you can also do this with a partner. So I'm gonna walk you through it, and uh, we're going to practice how we can do this safely with power and control. There are two ways to do it. There's the contact version and the no contact version. Um, and in both cases, you have it static and with dynamic footwork. So uh, this is a great thing that you can do with other people in the park and you can do it at a fair and safe distance as well. Let's get started. So if we are going to do the Masalafa 2, uh, the first thing we need to remember is what? How to hold the stick. How do you hold the stick? Take the point, set on your palm, wrap it around, Remember that your pinky should be just under the stick, okay? That buys you a little bit of extra length. And because it's two-handed, you're not worried about losing control. Make sure your uh, hand is a hand and a half above. And if you remember from the four principles that we discussed last week, you are going to be striking from the rear. So, what is the starting position? The beginning position for the Masalafa 2 is the pyramid guard. And the standard pyramid guard is right foot forward, left foot back, foot at a 45 degree angle, forward foot slightly bent, left leg a little bit straighter. Now you want to hold the stick like this. So it should be over your head in this position. If you look at the modern textbook, uh, you will see that also on the other certain ratings, the stick is being held over the head. And this is because one of the first principles is protecting your head, so you always want to be up here. So I'll show you the other side, just like that. So your left shoulder should be slightly forward, kind of covering your chin, just like that, good. So, here's how you play. Take the stick around the back, because that is the principle, and then you strike. Now, you're vulnerable, so what do you do? You pull back. And you strike. And you pull back again. And you strike. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now remember, uh, you're always recoiling to cover your head. So we'll walk through the mechanics of doing that. So, you strike. Now, instead of doing this, you're not doing this, okay? You're not threshing wheat. What you're doing is turning your hands. Your hands are leading. Because you also want to make sure that you keep the point of your weapon towards your opponent. If you do this, 
All you're doing is making space for your opponent. And because this is the most basic strike, uh, you know, this is um, elementary to the entire process. So, how would you do that with a partner? Well, it's basically an exchange. So, one of you will guard, another one will strike. Then you guard, and then you strike. Then you guard, and then you strike. Then you guard, and you strike. This is great as a power and control exercise. Because as a power and control exercise, you can work up doing it to speed without touching sticks. As I mentioned, two modes, type of contact and no contact. So this way, you can practice doing it quickly. You can practice um, doing it in dynamic foot mode footwork. But you also can practice doing it safely in a way that uh, ensures you're not hitting too hard. Because when you start clapping sticks and you're beating them together and, and all of that, you forget just how much these can hurt if you're hitting a person who is not wearing a protective gear. So this is a good way to practice doing a soft touch. So uh, we'll again go through it. When you're doing the striking mechanic, the striking mechanics of it, you strike, remember it's a push-pull, over the top of your head. You can also do it from here, do it from here, but as long as it's coming from above your shoulders. After you've done your strike, your immediate reaction should be to pull your hands back. So you strike and pull your hands back. Strike, pull your hands back. Strike, pull your hands back. Strike, pull them back. And make sure that you're doing this and not this. This is a problem right here because you're exposing your elbow and that will hurt. You want to make sure that the stick is between your elbow, your arm, and your opponent. It should be between you and your opponent at all times. Now I know some people have an issue getting the arms crossed, so here's how you work that out. You take this hand and you push it under your other elbow and then you pull it back. Then you can strike and you pull it back. Your right hand is leading your left hand. Just like that. Boom. 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 So I want you to try doing that 10 times. So we're going to do that 10 times together, okay? Ready. And so look, you can choose either the uh, Amameya or the Halfeya. And guard position. And one, guard on this side. Two, guard. Three, guard. Four, guard. Five, guard. Six, guard. Seven, guard. Eight, guard. Nine, guard. Ten. Good, good. How's everybody feeling? Good, good. All right. So let's see how much time we have left. Okay, good. We got a lot of time left. So I'm going to teach you a motion that is called the rasha. Now, the rasha is a uh, motion that you see often in uh, Tartib, the traditional version, and modern. And that's basically this motion here. So this is kind of like your jinga in capoeira. And so the way this works is you and the person that you are jousting with will sort of do this as a way to greet each other. Okay? So, how do you do it? You have two modes. You have the helfeya and the amameya, or the forwards and the backwards. So we're going to start with the first. So you start in this position here. Your stick is back here. There are four steps. You have to throw. Before I get into that, make sure that you are lateral to your opponent. You want to be sideways. So you want your shoulder to be toward your opponent. You don't want to be square. If you are square, that leaves this entire side of your body open to be touched. And then you lose the game and then it's sad. Also, you might get hit. It also has a practical application to it as well because if you you can use this motion to do that as well. And you're comfortable. So, back to the exercise. Four steps. The first step. 
less throw. So you want to go up like this. You don't want to go like this because that leaves your flank open. So it's over your head and back up the side. You're kind of trying to get under your opponent's stick to try and see if you can get those ribs and score that point. So up, over the head. Now immediately you need to cover. So once you get over the head, you got to cover back here so that your opponent's stick doesn't get under your stick and then they get you. You're actually at your most vulnerable in this particular spot. So now you bring it back in. That's third step, the turn. Fourth step puts it right in the back. So that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that is the forward direction. The reverse direction is the same, but in the other direction. So that is, so it's from here, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if you're doing this in concert with another person, when your stick is up here, in relation to you, their stick is back here. When your stick is here, their stick is here. When your stick is here, their stick is here. So as you can see, it's a circular motion. So I am, what you're doing is keeping the stick, your stick, between yourself and your opponent. Now this is done both in uh, static or in motion. It's best to be done in motion because this is sort of how you can gauge your opponent and get yourself into position. So that is the rasha. So that is uh, that motion there. And I'm going to teach you guys something fun since this is the last uh, public class for tahti that we're going to, or modern tahti we'll be doing for a while. And so I'm going to teach you a move that is called the ventilo. Ventilo just means fan, and you'll see why in a minute. So the ventilo looks like this. This is another way of greeting your opponent. So you can do it in this direction, or you can do it in this direction. So, how do you execute a ventilo? Well, same rules as always. Hand and a half apart, center of the palm. Starting position, you're actually in a bit of a horse stance. And the stick should be behind your back. Your hand should be at the knee of your back. So, how do you execute it? Well, your right hand triggers the motion and your left hand follows. So it's almost like turning a crank. Just like that, only you're doing it above your head. You can turn it back the other way. Back the other direction. So now how does it look over your head? Well, in the position back here. Now, turn the crank. And the stick, the point of the stick should stay behind your body. Just like that. Back in the direction. And back here. And that is the ventilo. Try to practice that in a place where you have a bit more room in the ceiling and you're not knocking any of your fans over or your uh, lamps or whatnot because uh, I'm not going to pay for the property damage. But uh, that is uh, modern tatib in a nutshell. Uh, last week we did the basic 13 strikes. We did some warm ups so we learned some of the exercises and um, how you can limber up and get loose. Uh, we also did a few of the dances. We talked about the music and I talked bit of etiquette as well as learning a special move the ventilo to greet your opponent so um, it looks like we're at about time for open floor let me see yep yeah, so these last 15 minutes um, I am here open floor let's uh, answer any questions that you might have
Let's see. So um, if anybody has any questions or they want to learn a little bit more about the art, I'm definitely here. So I'm just checking those right now. Let's see if we have any. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get to uh, talking a little bit about some uh, background in history. I'll show you some of the techniques from the modern Tatib textbook. Uh, so this was a book that was written by Dr. Adel Boulad himself, uh, my, my teacher and uh, somebody who is definitely worth uh, listening to or learning from. Um, so we have a question from Andrew Oakham. Andrew Oakham, yes, the classes uh, will be pasted, posted on Facebook. Um, once this particular set of four courses is completed, uh, we will be looking at putting these on Facebook, or not Facebook, sorry, on YouTube. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll let you guys know when these will be available. All right, so Modern Tatib Textbook. This is available from uh, budoeditions.com. You can also get this on Amazon. Um, it's not a cheap book, but it is absolutely worth having. Um, and I'll show you some of the things that it will cover. So uh, we have a little bit of the history in here. Uh, the book is actually written, so there's two versions. You have a version that is in English and Arabic, or French and Arabic, and you have a version that is in French and English. Uh, this version I have is in French and English because vive le Canada. So uh, we'll start with uh, some of the warm-ups. Now you will recognize some of the warm-ups from uh, what we did today. So you'll see uh, some of the stretching motions uh, with the stick uh, here. We have the, uh, let's see here. So here we have some of the other motions for uh, turning the stick around the back. Uh, you see those here as well. Uh, you also see some of the foot kicks. So these are all exercises that, uh, that were done in today's class. Um, we also have a section, there's also a section on how to properly perform the Russia. So this will actually explain to you how you do it, showing you pictures of the four stages of that motion. Um, there's actually also an entire section on etiquette, so the different stages of the joust. Uh, so I'll like, sort of explain how they go. So you start off with the salute. So this is where you do the uh, the khalfaya or the amameya. This is greeting the person in the floor, saying, hey, I'm here to hit you with a stick. You are also here to hit me with a stick. Let us hit each other with sticks together with respect. Uh, have in here, uh, so you have the beginning motion. So this is uh, what's called the gauge. So the gauge is important because the gauge is what you do with when you're doing the, the sort of the rasha or the beginning part of that. That helps you get to know what the opponent is like. Their motions like are they quick are they slow are they better with technique are they better with power this will help you read and get a get a sense for the type of uh, mo motions that they can do so then uh, you have the forward assault so this forward assault is basically uh, where you either do the 13 stages or one of the other various greetings there are lots of them you have everything from the asal to stronghold there's, there's, there's quite a few um, Best to check the Modern Tatib YouTube channel to see what uh, they all are in motion. But you can also get the book. Um, then uh, next we have the uh, the, full, the other sequence here. So we get through all of the the preliminaries. So the introduction, clacking the sticks, going through the stronghold of the castle, or 13 stages. Then uh, you have the Marasha. So the Rasha, that's you going around the circle, doing that motion that we showed going over the head uh, as a way to sort of prepare for the fight to begin. And then when the drum motions change, at that point, the joust will begin. And uh, if we're talking about points, uh, just remember that points are won in two ways, or three ways actually. Uh, you can win a match by touching the head once, your opponent could lose their stick, or you could make get two touches on the body. Uh, they have to be simultaneous, like bam, bam. They can't be a touch and then a touch again. So, uh, Renard asked a question about why does it only go shoulder height? So actually, it doesn't quite go shoulder height It um, when you're doing the dance. And I may have made an error uh, showing you earlier, but it should go here. So it's a full motion like that. So the idea is to prep you 
to strut to bring it up. It actually shouldn't go more than this high. Uh, you want to kind of want it no more than a 45 degree angle. So just like that. So that is uh, how that motion, that's how that motion uh, goes. So it should go up a bit past the head, but some people when they're dancing, they get a bit relaxed and they just kind of bring it to the chin, but you want to get that full, that full motion. So let's see, what do we have next? Um, yes, and of course we want to talk about forms. So there are the first nine forms in uh, modern Taktib here, uh, or the first seven, I should say. Was it nine or seven? There's the first set of forms. There, I think there are a few more that uh, Dr. Bulad has released, uh, which are available on his YouTube channel. Um, I think one of the most recent is uh, Shabaka or Shabaka. Um, but these are all, all of these forms are specifically to develop particular attributes. Uh, one of the ones that people generally start with is Nakhla. Nakhla is a very basic form. Um, and it helps you with footwork, with fainting, and with converting the stick from attack to defense in a, in a pattern. It's also a two-part form. So there is a portion that you do by yourself and a portion that you can do with a partner. So most people, when they start off, they learn the Nakhla A. And then when you have some people together, you can work on the Nakhla B. And then that will show you uh, how to be able to get used to and not be afraid of touching somebody or getting close to them while you're banging your sticks together. Because you have to get used to the idea that somebody will be swinging something at you and you have to know how to react. Because that is what keeps you safe and that's what helps you win the game. And uh, there are some interesting Easter eggs in here. Um, we actually have some other stuff from the uh, Abu Sir engravings. I believe this is from Abu Sir. This is an actual chart of Egyptian wrestling. So you can actually see the various techniques that the Egyptians would have used in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. You also see uh, the archery that is uh, listed as well uh, as the other two uh, martial disciplines. And stick fighting, or tahtib, is right here. You can see that right in there. Uh, you also see some other things on sword and shield fighting. Uh, you see all different aspects of Egyptian combat. But the three basic principles for the common soldier were wrestling, uh, archery, and stick fighting. They actually even show you stringing the bow. Uh, and uh, you can see different ways of shooting. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot in this book that you can actually get to look. And I mean, if you are a person who is um, good with grappling... If you can grapple, I can't, I'm terrible at it. Um, but if you are into grappling, then you have some sources in here as well to assist you with reconstruction. Um, but that is the Modern Tati book in a nutshell. Um, that is the basics, Modern Tati basics one and two. And uh, I will just be here to have some conversations with you guys. Uh, maybe I'll talk a little bit about um, how I ended up meeting Dr. Bulad. So. How I met Dr. Bulat actually is, uh, is interesting because um, at the time um, I was looking to develop my learning and um, I saw an opportunity to learn from Madan Tatib. So I sent him an email and I said, Dr. Bulad, I'm very interested. I'd like to be your student. Um, what do I need to do? And he was very gracious. Uh, he essentially said, sure, I'll teach you. I'll teach you for free. Um, your mission is to spread modern Tatib to the world. So this is me. Uh, living out my uh, my promise to make sure that I spread and develop a community of modern Tatib here in North America and uh, anywhere else I can. Um, so if you ever have any questions about modern Tatib, you know where to find me in the Historical African Martial Arts group on Facebook. I will absolutely be there and more than happy to answer any questions I can. And if I can't answer them right away, I will research them and get back to you. So, do we have any more questions on modern Tatib, Egyptian stick fighting, uh, anything along those lines uh, that, uh, that seems to be a bit unclear, or are there any specific techniques that you'd like to see again so that you can practice them at home with, uh, with the people around you? I'll give it a minute because I know there's a bit of a lag in the, uh, in the live stream. Mosquito. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Well, thank you all for coming, and I will see you guys next week. So next week, we are going to do El Matreg Basics. So this will be me showing you the different ways that you can uh, manipulate the stick. El Matreg is a really interesting art. Um, it is used for teaching uh, Berbers how to fight with a sword and the various swords that they have there. Oh, okay. So, uh, let's see. We have a question. The small horse, uh, what does one do with the hand not holding the stick? Oh, your hand not holding the stick? It's right here. That's it. Just like a soldier. Just keep it at your side. Okay, you know what, everyone, I think I'm going to make a run for it. The uh, mosquitoes are out, and I believe I saw one with hot sauce and a knife and fork. And uh, I am not about a five-course uh, meal tonight, so I will see you guys later. And uh, if you have any more questions, type them in here. Uh, within the next day or two, I'll come back and I will type some answers for you. All right? Thank you. Be blessed. And I will see you next week. Well, one more thing. Uh, the, promo, the promo for uh, Demand's classes will be coming out uh, very soon. Uh, we will uh, surprise with uh, the classes he'll be running for his four-week run. So thank you, and I will see you next week, same time, same Hammer Channel. Cheers.